Welcome to the Phoenix Pro Guide to Aruba Central. In this video, we'll show you how to configure secure guest wireless access using Aruba Central. This is the lab setup we're going to use for this video. The plan is to get our guest users to connect to guest SSID using a captive portal. We'll tunnel all guest traffic to our virtual controller into the magic VLAN and then allow internet access to guest users while keeping the rest of our corporate network secure. This video builds on the setup used in the how-to video on setting up wireless corporate access using a pre-shared key. As such, we already have our instant cluster set up and placed into a configuration group. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to license our access points with cloud guest subscriptions. Go to account home and click on subscription assignment. Scroll down to services management subscriptions and let's activate cloud guest subscriptions against our access points by selecting them all and dragging them over cloud guest subscription. Click yes to confirm. Next, go back to your account home and launch network operations center. We can see the guest option in the main menu. The next step is to set up our captive portal splash page. Click on guests in the main menu and click on the plus sign to add a new profile. In our example, we'll call it Captive Portal and set the type to Authenticated and require a username and password. We'll also enable self-registration, both email and phone based. Next, we'll set each guest account to be valid for 8 hours before it expires. You can also allow social logins as well, but note that you'll need your social media credentials to do so. We're not covering social logins in this video. Next, for successful logins, we'll send our guests to our corporate homepage. Note this option, which controls the length of a guest session before re-authentication is required. We can also limit the number of devices that are able to log in using the same set of credentials. In our example, we'll lock it down to a single device logged in per user. Let's also limit our guest data usage to 1 GB per day, measured via the local time zone, which for us is Australia. Next, there's whitelist URL, which are the websites that guests can visit even without successfully logging into our guest network. In our example, we'll allow them to access Aruba's website. Next, there's the sponsored guest feature, which allows guests to direct their self-registration request to a corporate user for approval. You'll need to specify your corporate domain here, so only emails belonging to this domain will be able to approve a guest's self-registration. You can also specify additional email addresses that will receive a copy of the guest self-registration request. For example, your front desk receptionist. Click on Next. On this page, you can customize the look and feel of your captive portal, including colors, backgrounds, and images. In this example, I'll just upload our corporate logo. Then, there's this area for specifying your organization's terms and conditions. In our example, we'll force our guest users to accept the terms and conditions to gain access. Let's also place an ad for Aruba Networks on our captive portal. We'll upload the Aruba logo and link it to the Aruba Networks URL. Remember that we whitelisted this URL, so guests will be able to access it even without registering or logging in. Click on Next. On this page, you can customize every step of the guest onboarding process. I'll leave it at default settings. Scroll to the bottom and click on the Preview button. Here you can see the captive portal that you've just built. You can click on the Back button to tweak your configuration as many times as you like, until you're happy with the results. Once you're ready, click on Finish to complete the captive portal setup. Now let's set up our DHCP server for guest users. Click on Devices and under the Access Points tab, click on the Configuration button. Go to Show Advanced, then click on the System tab. Scroll down to the DHCP section and expand it. Then expand DHCP for WLANs. Here we're going to set up the DHCP server settings for our Magic VLAN. Let's use a set of public DNS servers and set up our network. Click on Save Settings. Note that Deep Packet Inspection is disabled by default, so if you would like to use the full layer 127 firewalling capabilities of Aruba access points, you'll need to enable it. To do so, click on the Service tab and expand App RF, then select All for Deep Packet Inspection. Click on Save Settings, and we're now ready to set up our guest SSID. So, click on the WLANs tab, then select Add SSID. Name your guest SSID and expand advanced settings and let's trim our transmit rates. Next, expand miscellaneous, scroll down and deny inter-user bridging and intra-VLAN traffic. This will effectively isolate your guest users from each other. They will only have access to the default gateway on the guest network. Click on Next. 
Select Instant IP Assigned for Client IP Assignment to use the magic VLAN DHCP scope we specified earlier. Select Internal VLAN for Client VLAN Assignment, which will tunnel all guest traffic to the virtual controller. Click Next. Set the security level to Captive Portal, the Captive Portal type to Cloud Guest, and then choose the Captive Portal splash page profile we created earlier. Click on Next, and let's set up some access rules for guest users. Select Network-based access rules and click on Add Rule. First, let's deny guest users access to our internal corporate networks. You can specify additional firewall rules to restrict your guest access to inappropriate content or unwanted applications. In this example, I'll stop my guest users accessing adult websites as well as job search sites. Click on Next to continue and review the summary of the network you're about to create. You can click on the back button to change any of the settings or finish then OK to complete the setup. Let's test our network. I'll pretend to be a guest trying to access the network from my laptop. So, connect to the guest SSID. It's an open network, so it won't ask me for a passkey. Upon connecting, I'll be redirected to the Captive Portal splash page. If I try and browse to any website, the Captive Portal is going to intercept my request and redirect me back to the splash page, except the Aruba Network's URL will be whitelisted, which means I can access it directly or by clicking on the ad we placed without being logged into the portal. But in order to gain full access to the internet, I'll need to register. So, I'll register using my personal email. Then nominate my sponsor, the person who is going to approve my access request. I'll click on register. Now I have to wait for my sponsor to grant me access to the network. My sponsor will receive an email with my network access request and is able to approve it by following the link in that email, reviewing the request and clicking on approve. Once they've approved it, I can click on the continue button and see that my registration has been approved. And since account verification wasn't set up on this portal, I'll be automatically logged into the guest network and redirected to our corporate website. From here I can browse the internet, except for anything that was denied using access rules, such as job search websites, so I won't be able to go to seek.com.au. Let's have a look at our IP settings. You can see that we were assigned an IP on the Magic VLAN, and we were given our nominated public DNS server settings. We were able to ping Google, but if I try pinging resources on the internal corporate network, we are denied access, due to the rules we set up earlier. Let's do a trace route to Google. You can see that I'm traversing our internal corporate network and getting access to the internet. Now I'm going to connect to the guest network from my smartphone by going to Wi-Fi settings and selecting guest SSID. Upon connecting, I'm redirected to the captive portal. I'm going to register for access, but this time using my mobile phone number. I'll accept terms and conditions and select register. Clicking on continue doesn't log me in until my account has been approved. Again, my sponsor should receive an email with my guest network access request saying that I registered using my mobile phone number. The approval process is the same for them. They click on the hyperlink provided, review the request and click on approve. Once my request has been approved, I can click on continue and I'll be connected and redirected to the corporate homepage. I'll also receive a text message with my login details and I'm now able to browse the internet except of course any sites that guests were denied access to such as seek.com.au. Okay, let's jump back into Aruba Central. We can see that there are two clients connected to our network and we can view their connection details. Close the client and click on Guest in the main menu. Then click on the Visitors tab. Here we can view active guest sessions. Click on the account and you'll be able to see the guest details, including whether they are active, when they were created and when they expire. We hope you found this video useful. Please like, comment, subscribe and share. For access to more resources, visit phoenixpro.club